Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, having a great weekend. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me just begin. And I want to salute uh, all the dads out there who are dedicated family men, love their children, will die for their kids, will run through a wall for their kids, will put their kids, you know, future and everything ahead of theirs, those are the great dads, okay? Anybody uh, can make a child, but it really does take a real man to raise one. And I wanna salute everybody, not only obviously in our trading community, but everywhere around the world who are you know, dedicating their lives for the happiness uh, of their children. Because of that, right? Because of that, today's Father's Day, right? Everybody knows, and it's also my daughter's birthday party. So we are having a party uh, in the house. About 15, 20 people are coming uh, to the house, and it has nothing to do with me, right? So then, here we go, sacrificing our Father's Day for the greater good, for the happiness of our children. And again, my daughter turns 10 today, which is so damn depressing because I just remember her as being a baby. Uh, but again, it is what it is. So this weekend update will be a little bit shorter because again, my wife's already screaming at me. You got to help me. You got to help me. You got to help me. And you know, again, obviously I have to. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, pretty solid week of trading. Okay. Uh, very aggressive sessions, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Netflix, Tesla, that whole stuff going on. What I really like what I saw this week, and I, there's a reason why I left that Thursday and Friday. Uh, although Thursday and Friday were pretty solid. Okay, there's nothing wrong with Thursday and Friday. We got good value, but we started seeing a very, very tight channel in all the markets. After a, a really aggressive run last week, we saw four, four and a half percent uh, gains all across the war, uh, all across the board. This week, we saw very marginal gains. Now, why is that good and why is that bad? And and I'll explain that in a second. So if you look at if you look at the Nasdaq 100 you can make a very, very good argument for both the bear and the bull case, okay? Uh, the bear case is, well, the market ran up too much, too fast. We closed below the 50-day moving average, and we are about to break down below this, this technical channel level. The, bear, the bull case is, well, we had a great, great run. We started negating all the tariff news, China, Mexico, hell, Sweden, if we have to, okay? We're negating everything and we are resting to go higher. So who's right, okay? I think both are right, okay? And the most important part, when you have a channel that's starting to develop that's tight, something has to give. And this is kind of what we always talk about, that technical analysis is not something that you can have a really great debate. You can have that debate initially, but eventually something has to give. And when you're sitting in a channel this tight, and you can see it, 184 to the upside on the Qs, 182, right? Everybody see the double bottom here, right? 182 on the Qs, something has to give. So again, when we talk about the ability to read bias and have an opinion, it has to be predicated based on the data. That again, we collected, we talked about a nausea for years and years and years, and obviously we had a video on it uh, last week. So something in the market's gonna give. And here's where a lot of traders start to over trade because they start to overthink and they start to anticipate what's happening next. And the most important part from what I really, like when things started really slowing down for me, I would say about, I would say about 13, 14 years ago, when things started really, really slowing down for me is when I really understood that, again, my opinion means absolutely nothing. We, we kind of covered this case so many times that everybody has an opinion, right? Everybody has an opinion. Everybody uh, has a bias. Everybody has an agenda because they want their stock need to go higher if you're long, um, obviously lower if you're short. But for me, I realized years ago, it's going to save you so much money if you just play the idiot role and let the market dictate to you. And what we saw on Thursday and Friday, kind of a flat line session. Okay. If you look at this is Thursday and Friday session, right? Kind of a, actually you can make even a case that Wednesday into the close, but look how tight the session is. 
And you can see very, very clearly the top of the channel here at 84, the bottom of the channel here at 82. And this week, again, instead of putting us in a situation that we have to guess, this week we're going to just sit there and wait for the macro case to uh, kind of unravel, let the market dictate to us which way it's going to go. Again, we have two eyes, right? Two eyes, two ears, two feet, two hands. We trade both sides of the market. It doesn't make a difference to us which way the market breaks. Of course, everybody loves a bull market. So much easier trading in a bull market because, again, there is a very, very high probability there's going to be extra market participants because everybody's chasing. Again, all you need to do, if you don't believe me, all you need to do is look at the IPO game just for the last week, right? Just in the last week. Just, again, BYND is still going nuts. We'll get to that in a second. Chewy. I didn't realize it was Chewy went public on Friday, okay? I didn't realize it was the same Chewy that we've been using, right? For all you guys who have animals, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Chewy is an awesome, awesome site. It's it's uh, it's it's kind of, it's much cheaper, I think, than Pet um, Petco or PetSmart uh, online stuff. It's really, really good. Uh, I, I, I definitely uh, recommend, you, you know, buy, buy food, toys, all that good stuff. So Chewy went public. You had stocks like FVRR that I traded on Thursday, right? On Thursday, and just all these IPOs are going nuts, and it, it really does really show how aggressive this market still is. Even despite the fall we saw for seven weeks straight, people were still chasing prices. So again, obviously, we would love to see the queues kind of confirm this 180, you know, 184 level, because again, it'll just bring, bring an increase, increasingly amount of aggression into every other trade. But uh, again, very, very important week for the bulls, the bears. Uh, again, if we reclaim 84, we probably are starting to march in the summertime uh, to 52 week highs and we start reclaiming this 82 level to the downside. Then yes, you can see what our future could potentially uh, wind up. Again, another thing, I, I think one of the biggest wives tale that um, people talk about, and it, they always hear about it through a third person, they kind of roll with it, and sometimes things just start having a life of its own. The idea that summertime trading is slow is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely false. Uh, last summer was ridiculously aggressive. These beta names were great. And if you believe that the IPO game is still very, very strong, I mean, look what's happening now. Again, today is only June the 16th. Summer officially hasn't even kicked off yet. But you can see the aggressive bias of how some of these stocks are moving. Again, B BYND is moving, goes up $15, $20 a day, right? These IPOs are going nuts. You're still having really, really good channels most days on beta. So where is the slow? And again, if you believe, you know, if you believe, if, especially if you're an intraday trader, if you believe that, that the market is slow in the summer, you really have to reevaluate what you're trading, okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're trading, if you're trading Procter and Gamble, right? If you're trading, you know, um, you know, God knows Oracle. Yeah, maybe it's a little slower. But if you're trading beta, if you are trading stocks with the highest uh, average to range throughout the day, and there's so many opportunities generally on, on most days, you should be okay. So again, don't listen to the whole market makers run the markets, algos run the markets, the market is slow in the summertime. It's all nonsense. All nonsense. I, if you noticed, I kept the PG, again, for the kids for Father's Day, but it's all nonsense. It all depends on your individual process. It all depends if you're a swing trader, uh, scalper, whatever the case may be. But again, the myth of the market slow. Because if this is slow, God, you know, God help us what, what fast is. Because this is really, really uh, aggressive action. Uh, again, very, very solid week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, super aggressive. Thursday, Friday. Thursday, uh, Thursday was kind of a weird day. I, I, I put on a lot of trades uh, to make a very, very modest, very modest a, a day. Uh, and this is kind of how we started seeing the, 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 the ranges really start to contract. And Friday, for the exception of like BYND and Disney, you started seeing really slower and narrowing action and, and, and Facebook as well. Uh, but it, it's very, very important to kind of don't judge one day and kind of make that whole argument that, again, everything is slow. It's not slow. I think the fact that the queues are trading in a $2 range right now is the reason why the ranges are contracting. Come Monday, Tuesday, we confirm 184. You'll see beta really launch. And obviously, if they start confirming this 82 level, well, beta will really uh, implode as well. So I think the ranges will start to expand. Our job is just to wait for the value until we get that confirmation. So uh, let's get into Friday session. Okay, guys, let's get to Friday session. Uh, again, I know every week I try to uh, give some advice to aspiring traders. I'm just a little bit pressed for time. Again, I can, my wife's already 
Like she's already texting me, saying, you gotta come downstairs, you gotta come downstairs. So here's my advice, and this is kind of the best advice that uh, Meyer offered one of my, uh, one of my uh, two mentors um, that gave me a long, long time ago, okay? Dan, don't trade like a schmuck. That's it, that's my advice for the day. And what that means is you don't need to trade every single day. You don't need to be in every single trade. You don't need to be in every single trade that retail is doing. You don't need to be in the hot stock of the day. You don't need to follow the herd into a day. Have an opinion, right? Have an opinion. Even if you're wrong, have an opinion. Don't trade like a schmuck. Again, sometimes the most simplistic advice really sticks home and really gets into your subconscious. So again, going into this week, we are delta neutral until uh, we get confirmation. Um, but again, individual plays will be there. So let's talk about Friday's session. Here was, here was a, a trade that could have been awesome. Some of you guys got filled, some, some of us did, didn't, like I didn't, uh, on, on the dip, and I'll explain to you what happened. So we were looking at Disney, right? We were looking at Disney. Disney had a monster, monster day on Thursday. So I turned around and said, look, any, any buy, okay, any buy into support uh, is, is, is going to squeeze the shorts. And I was bidding... 150.40. Okay, that was the rising support. I was bidding 150 for a 140.40. It traded 140.53 and exploded. Okay, absolutely exploded. So I missed the dip by. Uh, I got long red to green, and the stock. I mean, the stock did very, very well. Uh, you know, put up a 70, 80 cent candle. Uh, you know, did well. You know, did well. It obviously came back. But again, one good piece of advice just to give you guys, uh, especially if you're new traders, anytime you see a stock explode the previous day, it's a really high probability trade that if it opens up weaker and washes out into rising 60 minute support, shorts will get trapped there. So if you're trading on, on one to five minute channel, consider the 60 minute view. And once you start seeing stocks trade right into support, it's a really, really good high, high probability trade. So for all you guys who caught the dip, you got a monster, monster trade. Uh, I did okay with it right to green. I still like it. I still like it. I think if it once confirms 143, it'll go higher. Um, Tesla was disappointing. Okay. Uh, it was really, really disappointing. Let me tell you why. So I was looking at this 215 pivot, right? Uh, and again, why was 215 important? Uh, 214.90, 214.90, 214.90. So you can see it's all air up here. There's no supply. So um, I get long on the 215 area and I know right away, and if all you guys are trade Tesla right away, you guys know when Tesla goes, it goes. There is no, well, it goes up 50 cents, let me rest. Blah, blah. No, no, no. It goes. Three, four, five dollars a share. And if you look up here, it's all air. There was nothing between 215 confirmation to 228. And the stock, you know, so I buy the 215, and the stock starts going up, as you can see here. It starts going up, and, and then it just does nothing. The whole rest of the day goes right back in. So, you know, I took some off, you know, I took some off because again, I could tell once Tesla only goes up like a dollar, dollar and change, I could tell something's wrong. So I took some off. I took two, th two thirds off and the rest I got uh, broke even on, which was fine. I still like it. I think they were cleaning up a seller. You could clearly see it every single time it went 215 and a half, even 216 sellers came in. So there must have been a seller in the crowd that sometimes, and I say this all the time, charts don't lie, but they don't tell the tr truth sometimes as well. So I, I have to believe it's a still valid. And once it starts getting above 217, maybe finally it goes on Monday. So I was a little disappointed on Tesla, but again, uh, like I always say, a, a you know, a, a modest profit or a small profit is much better than a small loss or a moderate loss. So uh, CRWD, I, I didn't trade this one, CRWD, 7250, uh, 7250, it never got above. Um, oh, BYND, this was huge. Uh, BYND, uh, we talked about this one. Uh, so BYND right here, we talked about this one. It's a sneaky pivot. Again, a lot of people are taught to buy the bottom, the top of the channels, the bottom of the channels. Our meat and potatoes is right in the middle. So 142 is a sneaky pivot. It needs to build. Again, talk about a monster. So here is 142 right here, right? You see, everybody see this guy's a sneaky channel, right? Not the top, not the bottom. It's this whole series of candles that are very sneaky. The top of this channel here, 4170, 4179. So again, uh, once it broke above that 142 and confirmed, it just absolutely exploded. Uh, 1 to 158. Uh, this, I, I started watching this thing this week, and I'm telling you, this has the opportunity to be my next version of Tesla. It's already hated, okay? It's already hated. There's a lot of emotions involved with the stock. So once I start seeing the bids and offers 
consistently get tighter because right now sometimes it's still trading like a 50, 60 cent spread, 100 share lots. Once I see start liquidity and once it start actually going in higher intervals in price, it means less retail participation. I do believe this could potentially be, uh, again, I'm not, I want to say the next Tesla because I want to see this thing, number one, be easy to borrow, okay, number one. But I also want the, you know, I also want uh, the bids and offers to be tighter and I want to see more liquidity as it goes higher in price. But I'm starting to really like this. I think I'm going to start trading this thing uh, on a daily basis, especially if it's once it starts getting uh, easier uh, to borrow because who the hell wants to pay to play? Again, not me. Um, but that's that. So, you know, big, big move for all you guys. Record it, you know, put up a $15 candle. If you, hell, if you made three, four dollars, is a good trade. Anything above that uh, is uh, gravy. So that was well. And uh, Facebook, Facebook was strong as well. Uh, 50, 80 needs to build. Again, going into crypto, uh, whatever. Okay. So here was the 50, 80. Uh, here is the 50, 80 confirmation. Uh, it went to like, you know, it basically went up a dollar initially and then, uh, you know, came in and rallied back again. So a uh, solid front. Again, nothing crazy. You want to get some nuts? I even bought a small cap stock. Ready? I even bought a small cap stock. If you guys noticed, um, if you guys noticed on Friday, there was a buyer that came in on the option flow of all things, right? And the buyer came in with, came in with July dollar uh, July dollar calls and you saw the stock and people in the room in live when I bought it it went from 68 cents to like a dollar 12 so I started I started I was watching I, I saw order flow in this ENT so I started buying this thing same thing somebody bought a, a dollar calls a July dollar calls the stock 60, 60 it was 69 cents so I bought some stock at like 67 67 and a half 68 cents and the stock went to like 80, 72 cents. Who knows? Maybe I get lucky. Who knows? Maybe I get lucky in this thing as well. So overall, uh, pretty solid week. Uh, very, very uh, pleased with it. And again, going into this week, again, we have to be uh, delta neutral. We have to wait for the macro uh, case to be confirmed. 84 to the upside, 82 to the downside. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas for a Monday session. Again, I apologize for this video being a little bit shorter, but again, when the wife says you got to get downstairs and help prepare for the party, enough said, right? So let me give you guys some ideas uh, that I do like. Um, I kind of, and I, I Tesla I love, uh, I'm going to give it one more shot. Uh, 217 break, who knows, maybe it gets back to 222. Um, I like the video short, okay? Uh, it closed right below the 10 day moving average. If the market starts re uh, going back lower, I, I want to see this thing under 142.80, 142.50 if it starts confirming. Uh, Disney, I still like. I, I personally think you still need to buy it on a dip. Okay, if we get a nice dip on Friday into rising support, as of right now, it's 4120s, but that's going to change based on futures. Uh, either a, a buy the dip uh, onto the 60 minute channel or a break above 143. Keep in mind, we had, it was a really, really aggressive slew of call buyers coming in for the July 145s. Um, I, I like Facebook as well. Um, I like Facebook as well. Um, I think if it starts confirming, uh, this 182 channel, I think, goes higher. Uh, NTES, again, this is all uh, NTS is starting to roll over. If it's if this thing can confirm this 264 area, I think there's a shot it goes down to, all the way down to 258. I like that as well. And a couple of small cap stocks, I, I, you know, for all you guys who trade these smaller names, um, I kind of like this IDEX if it starts building above two. And I kind of like this uh, AC... Uh, ACIU above the $6 break as well. Again, am I going to trade these things? Probably not. But again, if this is your game, again, a pivot is a pivot is a pivot. Guys, have an awesome, awesome um, Father's Day. Kiss your kids. Watch them grow up. Put smiles on their face and just live a happy, awesome life. Guys, God bless. I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.